Hello and welcome to the unofficial Bozer Drew Senior Hockey League podcast. My name is Corey. I'm joined by my co-host, Corey. Corey, hello everybody. <laughs> I'm getting better at that You're intro. great at it. Hey, it only took three months. Um, ah, you were always good at it. No, I was not. You if just... I posted every edit and every time I flubbed it, we could have an hour-long episode of me messing up the intro. But nobody wants to listen to it except maybe my sister so she can mock me. <laughs> the only time you really messed up is uh, you keep forgetting uh, unofficial yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I'm not, it's, we got this. It's getting there. We got it. We so, got uh, it. we have a really fun interview coming up in the second half of this, uh, with Patrick Jones from uh, the Marchand de Chipago. Very, very good one. Uh, thank you to, pra- to Patrick. Um, just another fun one. Geez, the interviews keep getting better and better and better. Um, yeah, uh, it was a good one. It was a good time. So, um, We've had a player from every team now on the podcast. I was just about to mention that uh, Patrick Jones, the captain of the Shippigan Marchman, um, just a fantastic weekend for them. Uh, oh. Really, and we were honored to be at both games that they won, Miramichi and Intracadi. That game in Miramichi was one of the best games I've seen this year. I think it's my favorite this year. That LC Baktouche game must have been something to be at live too, though. Um, yeah. Yeah, that one was really close. Um, the comeback in the third for the Hawks was really something special. Uh, it shows that this team is for real, uh, but yeah. it shows at the same time how friggin' good Alex Collette is with that beautiful helmet of his. Yeah, that helmet's something else, man. I love it. I uh, You had mentioned it to me, and then uh, Ricky sent me a picture of the back of it, and I shared that. That's beautiful. And then um, the JCs posted something, and I saw the whole helmet. Yeah, it's, yeah it's man, that beautiful. helmet with those pads—that's that's gorgeous. I can't wait to see it on Friday yeah. night. Green is my favorite color, so you know I'm biased to the color green. So <laughs> there we go, um, Corey. Let's uh, let's get into the uh, meat of the episode here. Where are we starting? Are we starting with the upcoming games or the current standings? Let's Where's start it? with the standings. Standings. All right. So in first place, you'll never guess who it is. Bet you a million bucks. It wouldn't be Dalhousie, <laughs> would it? I would lose a million bucks. Dalhousie Marauders, 11 and 2, 22 points. What a powerhouse. Man, yeah, impressive. I won't not pick them again. <laughs> but they're going to lose sometime. Yeah, and uh, then I'll lose a point. So, uh, in second place, the Mirror Machine Northmen, a 6 4 and 1 record for 13 points. They are up one spot. Uh, the Tracadi Alpine, a 6 and 6 record for 12 points, down one spot. The Spring Hill Coal Miners, a 5 5 and 1 record for 11 points. And the Elsie Puck Duck Hawks, a 5 6 and 1 record for 11 points as well. Uh, in sixth place, the River Valley Lumberjacks, a five and four record, ten points. They are above five hundred. Uh, the Bucktooth JC improved their record this weekend with a win over the Hawks, and they are four and seven with eight points. And Shippigan really improved their record. Uh, the Shippigan Marchand, a three six and two record for eight points. So between two and eight, it's still pretty damn close. Yeah, um, two weekends and everything could flip completely. Exactly. I love it. Yeah. Uh, this week, we have three games on Friday and two on Saturday. And none on Sunday, which is odd, because last year, Sunday was such a busy year, day yep. for the league. Um, uh, where are yeah. we starting Friday? Friday, Miramichi will be in Baktouche, and we will also be at that game. Yeah, we can't wait for that one. I, I don't know if I have a favorite team to cheer for, but Miramichi is one of my favorite teams to watch play mm-hmm. hockey. Um, they're rough. The hits are just phenomenal. I like watching Nick four and mess with people. It's funny to me. And, um, I, I love the rink and buck and it's only 20 minutes from my house yeah. and, uh, 30 from yours, or 25 yeah. from yours. So, um, to me, it's Miramichi. I enjoy them as a team. Oh yeah. Buck has the best goalie. Alex Colette is a wall standing behind him for 40 minutes in Elsie, you see the greatness of this player. He is that good. You said he was the carry price of this league. That's a shoot right there. 
Yeah, he's he's phenomenal. I mean, last year I saw that a lot. I went to, in the playoffs, I went and saw, obviously, a lot of Bakhtouche games because they're close. But I went to River Valley and saw Bakhtouche in River Valley. I think you came with me to that game. I think I missed that one. Okay. Um, so I've, I've seen so much of Colette in every game. He's just, he's impressive. Even on losing efforts, he's still, it. even if they lose seven to three, it could have been 11 to three if they didn't have yeah. Colette. Oh, big like time. he's just that good. Sometimes mm-hmm. you don't click. It's not your night, but for Colette, it's, yeah, it's really impressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, second game on Friday, Spring Hill will be in Tracadie. That's going to be a phenomenal game. It really will be. Uh, River Valley will be in Shippigan. Can Shippigan continue the momentum? I wouldn't say no at this point because they're they're impressive. They were fun to watch last weekend. We've been saying since the beginning, this team is sneaky good. They're better than their record show, and they are proving us right. I, I, I completely agree. So um, is there another game on Friday or is that it? That is the only three games on Friday, two games on Saturday. Dalhousie will be in River Valley. Yeah. And on, I believe you will be at this game, correct? I will be at the Dalhousie River Valley game with uh, my girlfriend. And I will be in Bucktoosh. I won't be in Bucktoosh. I'll eventually be in Bucktoosh, but you, I'll be you, in Spring Hill. Pass- I'm going to drive by Bucktoosh on my way to Spring Hill. <laughs> there you go. I'll be in Spring Hill as they host Bucktoosh with your sister, camera woman, Cheryl. Yeah, Cheryl's going to be there. So the better footage will be in Spring Hill, but the better Corey will be in River Valley. I oh. Think, uh, uh, f- uh, sure, why not? <laughs> I, I stumped you there. <laughs> that was a good one. Um, no, in all honesty, uh, it's tough because we all want to, we both want to be at both those games. So we're just going to split up and, um, we'll watch, we'll both watch video from the other game probably, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, it's going to be a good weekend. We're, we're pretty pumped for it. Yep. Uh, the only thing left here, predictions. Oh man. My predictions last weekend were absolutely atrocious to the point that I had two people message me <laughs> on Sunday night and Monday morning respectively and say rough weekend for you for predictions. And I was like, what did I do wrong to deserve this from you guys? Come on. You, what you did wrong is you didn't pick ship again. That's a true story. Uh, and I did not fare much better. I think I had one extra point than you. Our record right now is Corey Vautour, moi, 17, uh, wait, 19 and 17, sorry. And Corey Robichaud, our host here, 18 and 18. You were at 500, though. Yeah, yeah, I'll take that. Um, so, game one. All right. On Friday, Miramichi in Buck Douche, who you got? I think the Bucktooth JCs are going to win the game. Okay. I have Miramichi. So. I bet you do. Um, I think Bucktooth is starting to get some momentum. And with momentum and Colette and that, it's a scary combination. So Yep. So second game, Spring Hill in Tracadie. This is a really hard game. Yeah. Um, These are really close teams. Spring Hill... Has improved. I think this is a Tracadie win, but I, I it could go either way. I don't know. So you have Tracadie. I have Spring Hill. Oh, this! I hope I crush you this weekend. <laughs> Next one, River Valley in Shippigan. Um, I love the Lumberjacks. I'm picking Shippigan. I also have Shippigan on this one. Um, Not making that mistake again. <laughs> yeah, those are, they demolished us last weekend. I do think River Valley is a good team. I just think I do too. traveling to ship again, that's a tough rink to play in. So ship again gets the win. Saturday. Dalhousie in River Valley. River Valley is such a great team. They're, uh, they're really impressive, especially on home ice. They're fantastic. Who are you picking, Corey? I got Dalhousie. I ain't, yeah, got... I ain't making that mistake again. I've got I, Dalhousie as well. I love the Lumberjacks. They are a fantastic team, but I've been burned before. Yeah. I'm going to try a different way to manipulate manipulate you with Do you Dalhousie. hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, River Valley is such a great... I already know that. I already know they're a great team. You're just trying to persuade me. 
Dalhousie is probably going to get the win there, but River Valley could make it tough. That's a that's a really hard rink to play, and it's loud. There's people like on top of the ice almost. People are eating really good burgers, so they're happy. <laughs> yeah. Um, final game: Buck Douche and Spring Hill. I think this is a Spring Hill win. I have Buck Douche. Okay, well, shit. Buck Douche did win last time they were in Spring Hill in a shootout. Mm-hmm. Um, so we only agreed on two games, so yeah. something's got to give. Yeah, uh, God. I, uh, yeah, sure. Let's see how it goes. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, you can't see the video. I can see Corey right here. I can see this man sweating bullets right now. It's it's just a pick em thing. It doesn't matter, <laughs> but uh, Corey talks a lot of shit in private messages about how great he's doing in the pick em when I'm not. And we're driving home, and he's like, Oh, River Valley won. I picked River Valley. He's taunting me in the back seat of the car. I'm like, this is just not nice. And here, here's the funny part. We were in where were we? We were in Miramichi. No, we we're in Trackety for that. Trackety. Okay. Yeah. So I'm in the back, and all of a sudden Corey goes silent, and he's got his phone to his ear. I'm like, what is he doing? And then he goes, God damn it! Yeah, you picked. <laughs> yeah, you picked uh, the right team. <laughs> No, I I put I put a Bluetooth headphone in my ear and I was listening to the podcast because I didn't think that you picked River Valley, but you did. And I guess we were probably in like Nigawak driving through Nigawak, and you're right. I was like, damn it, you did pick them. Um, we gotta put the put them in the the chat so we at least know who picked who or something. <laughs> um, man, uh, yeah, whatever. I suck at pick them. I'm not much better at fantasy hockey, and I suck at that uh, pro line, too. So none of this is surprising to me. It's just harder when you're doing it over a mic and then uh, podcasting it to all of the province and part of Nova Scotia that listen, and the one guy who listens to us in China. I don't know. Props to that guy. Yeah, That's we love that guy. Right if you're <laughs> listening to this right now, uh, dude in China, we don't know if you're from, like, New Brunswick and you're in China or if you just – came across us but uh we love you thank you for your support this dude listens to every episode that is crazy i love Just this guy crazy. um cory we uh oh we have some hoodies for sale we do so at request of some of the teams in the league we uh talked to our friends at illicit and now we have some hoodies up for sale first order is going to be going out in uh, five six days yeah, seven days on the 20th, and then we're going to have a second order sometime in January or February. So um, if you're interested, shoot me a message. We can make that happen. And um, I don't know. That's about it. We're going to get to the uh, interview with Patrick Jones. It's a good one. Don't miss that one. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun one. He's a super guy. So thanks to Patrick and thanks to the Marshall. Um, Corey, it's been fun. We'll yeah. uh, We'll see you soon. Take care. Hello and welcome to the unofficial Bozers or Senior Hockey League podcast. I'm Corey, joined by my co-host, Corey. Hey, everybody. And uh, we have a very special guest today from the Marchand de Chupagon. We have uh, Patrick Jones. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Yeah, man. You're, you guys are doing great there on the internet, so it's, it's I feel special to be here with you guys. We, uh, we feel, ours. Yeah, we feel special to have you on. It's a great time. Um, <laughs> this is it came together quick, and that's fantastic. Yeah, um, totally agree on that. The uh, man, les marchands. So uh, let's start talking about your career, and then we'll get to the marchand. Um, well, um, yeah. So go ahead. Go ahead. Do you want to uh, ask any questions, or do you want me to go? Um, well, talk to me about your early career. Growing up, uh, you played in La Mecque. Where are you from when you grew up? Well, so I'm from Lamech. So basically, for people that don't know, it's about 10 minutes from Shippigan. So it's on an island. It's uh, We're interconnected with uh, Misku Island, which is also right close to here. Uh, so we started playing hockey at four years old. Then, uh, just like anybody else, uh, hated it at first. <laughs> and then uh, the next year, I just started, you know, uh, jumping the parking lines here in uh, Lamech with uh, my sister's rollerblade. So I quickly uh, got back into skating, and uh, the next winter I just started back playing hockey and uh, fell in love with the sport, and never stopped playing since. There maybe, uh, you know, it's just this, it's just a sport, so it's, it, you get hooked to it pretty quick when you're young. So yep, it all happened here in Lamech. 
you uh, you played a little bit in the queue for uh, Acadie Bathurst. Yeah, so in uh, 2009 there, I was drafted uh, first overall for the Titan, yeah. first pick on them for the team. Uh, it was uh, 21st overall actually on the on the draft. It was in Moncton. And uh, yeah, so I played the full year there, the, played the 68 games or so, I believe. And uh, yeah, it was a great season. Fortunately, uh, ended up uh, doing something else the next year. I just It didn't work out for me there in Bathurst, but uh, it was a great experience. Yeah. That's you awesome. played uh, in the MJAHL after that or during that? Yeah, well, the thing is, is uh, I... You know, me and my agent at the time uh, felt like we needed to move on from Bathurst and uh, wanted a trade out of there. And it just didn't work out like we wanted to. So the following season, I just went to uh, the Junior A in Camelton. Okay. Played a couple of games there, but ended up hurting my shoulder pretty bad. Mm. So that was a great start of the season, right? So I ended yeah. up going yeah. back home and said, you know, I'm, I'm just not going to play hockey again. And, you know, basically I, I, it just felt real bad on my shoulder. Then I just thought, you know, forget about it. But then, uh, I ended up uh, going back to school, uh, back home and uh, decided I was going to play high school, uh, just with my friends, uh, my long-term friends from, uh, back home and, uh, played hockey there. And, uh, yeah, so the, the following year, I played like a game or two in uh, Miramichi for the Timberwolves, but uh, I just never made it back in in that junior uh, league there. So, so it's a good thing that you went back to playing hockey with your friends and kind of fell in love with the games. What it sounds like to me. Yeah, no, totally, a hundred percent there. And that was another thing there when I was playing uh, major junior. Um, I I wasn't doing the best at school. Uh, you know, we were practicing in the morning from nine to eleven, I believe, and then uh, we would just go at school from one to four. But uh, all the the whole team was in the same class in Bathurst. Okay. So we were all mixed up. I mean, we were two 16 years old in that class, me and uh, Bryce Milson from Miramichi. Yep. So we were the two 16 year old on the, on the Teton that year. And, you know, some guys had a easier way to doing it, of going, doing like long distance courses with school and stuff like that. Uh, but I quickly realized there, it, I wasn't doing as good as I should have been. So, uh, yeah, so it kind of hurt my grades a little bit. So the second I, you know, when it didn't work out there in Camelton and stuff, and I was like, I, I, I can't screw this because, you know, if I don't get my credits and I don't graduate with my friends and I, it just felt scary for me for some reason at that age. And yeah, uh, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I came back to high school, played with my friends and had a blast. And, uh, you know, some people didn't, you know, think it was right for, for me to play major junior and go back high school. But uh, I, you know, it, it was just a fun time, you know, just being young. Yeah. After that, uh, Lamech ended up with the senior team and you went and played for Lamech for a while. Uh, tell me a bit about that. Yeah. So at uh, 18 years old, they played in Lamech. Uh, that was my first year, uh, senior, <laughs> uh, man, it was a big jump. I mean, yeah. uh, the guys are strong and, uh, you know, a 40 year old, uh, dude that played hockey his whole life comes in the corner and sees Patrick Jones, 18 years old, you know, <laughs> <laughs> taking you stuff. Uh, all of a sudden you wake up, you're on the ice and you're looking at the roof and you're like, Oh man, I, I got hit hard. So that was <laughs> kind of the first senior year of uh, myself there but uh, you know kind of played around in a couple of years there and I hurt my knee real bad at that point uh, stretched my ligaments and all that stuff there so kind of put hockey aside for a little bit at that time also so after you put hockey back aside the Bulls Israel Senior League starts up after COVID and Shippigan has a team which is really I mean that's like a home team for you um yep. And now you're the captain of the Marshal. Can you tell me what happened that led to this? Well, um, I mean, the first year, three years ago, uh, the first year I played in this league, uh, prior to that, I, I quit hockey for three years, but I came back and uh, Sam Paquette uh, was the team captain at that time. Uh, so Sam, you know, we had a great season that year. Uh, we won the cup. I mean, uh, the vibe in the room was unreal. I mean, you, you can't get anything better than three years ago, like in uh, 
in the chemistry of the guys and all of that stuff. So the following year, uh, Sam uh, turns, uh, you know, 44 years old and decides that he's going to retire from hockey. And uh, so, yeah, from, from there, it just uh, it was decided that uh, I was going to be a team captain and I accepted the role. And uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be, you know, leading or the guys and uh, just trying to be a role model for the younger people and just give all that I can give on the ice, you know. And, you know, the, the older you get, I mean, I'm still young, but the older you get, like, you quickly realize that the, the young guys got it over you so you just got to lead in other ways so yeah. that's tr that's what i'm trying to do here in uh, ship again and it's just you know uh be there for everyone and, and uh, try to solve uh anything that might happen that uh, little challenges here and there and uh, you know just go from there and play the good game of hockey can you uh describe to me what the team's like in the locker room you guys seem like uh, we've seen you three games i think maybe four games Three. and three so we saw you guys in lc which you know you guys looked good you came out firing and we've been saying the whole season i don't know if you listen at all but we've been saying the whole season like how have they not won a game they're better than their record like yeah, it's very sure. evident that you guys are better than your record and um what's the locker room like well uh su surprisingly enough it 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 it, it stays it stayed above water the whole time uh some people might think that it went to the garbage and you know the guys can't look at themselves anymore or something like that but for the majority of the time uh let's say 99 percent of the time everything is great everybody gets along well uh the guys are i, I don't know the guys are just grateful to play hockey honestly um, yeah that you win or you lose uh i mean to a certain point i mean we were zero and eight uh nobody cried and you know stayed home because they didn't win a game i mean we all still came to practice on tuesday night and uh you know the guys still uh, had a beer after a game you know the practice or you know you just can't let that weight on your shoulder you just gotta enjoy life and play the sport and uh, even if you win or not it, it should always be the same so that's what we're trying to bring in the locker room most of the time it's it's always good and uh yeah no the the guys are getting along uh, very well there that's good um yep, so we were 100%. at we we're at both games last weekend yeah let's talk about that mirror machine game first of all that might have been the best game i've seen all year like just as a fan it was you guys you guys came back from two down with Corey. how much time was left 55 seconds uh was scored on the when there was just one goal uh, a one goal game and 11 seconds to tie the game yeah that's uh that, that that game was unreal i i wasn't there unfortunately i had some uh emergency in, uh, on my family side there i couldn't make it to the game uh but man, I, I, I got home that night and uh, looked at the, the game. It was live on Facebook on the Mary Machine Nortman page. And yep. it was five to three to the for Mary Machine. So I was like, well, you know, the guys played good game, man. It's like <laughs> they're all into it. And then they, they got a short bench and stuff like that. And all of a sudden they pulled a goalie and scored a goal. And uh, I was like, oh man, that's that's good. You know, fuck good guys. And uh, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, 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 let's get going here. And I get all excited and, you know, pull the goalie again. They scored and I was like, oh, man, like it's getting real and the guys are playing good. So, you know, went over time and, uh, you know, they scored and extremely happy for the guys. And uh, it, it, it was I, I wish I would have been there because it was such a crazy game there. So, yeah, no, they played uh, played awesome there. Both teams played awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we were sitting right behind your bench, just a little bit over to the left, and uh, the energy. Oh my God! Some shipping and fans <laughs> all obviously made the trip down because you guys have some some really loyal, amazing fans who are just great people, and yeah, they were do. going nuts, man. <laughs> they scored, imagine. and it's like you guys might as well have won the cup because it was yeah. that kind of a game. Or and, the fifty fifteen Mary Machine. One of you. Yeah. <laughs> Holy moly. Um, yeah. A couple grand. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> exactly. Such a good game. And then yeah. uh, you guys go to Trackity and you guys just yeah. came out firing, man. Holy shit. You just yeah, took yeah. over that game against a great Trackity team. I mean, they're phenomenal. Yeah. So 100%. 100%. I mean, Trackity is very strong, man. Uh, they're... They're a great team and everybody's playing good and they got a great chemistry. Uh, 
their power play is is killer. Uh, so it just happened that that game, uh, you know, it's just like the good old hockey game. It just happens that you know <laughs> that you get the good bounces and everything is working well for you. Uh, the shot that you're taking, uh, it's going in. It's not hitting a post or you know missing the net or something. Uh, so that game in Tragedy, it was you know it 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 just was a relief for us. You know, it was a big uh, boost in confidence. Uh, to know that we're still able to score cold goals in here, here and there and win a game. So For uh, sure. we're certainly uh, taking those games there. Yeah, it's got to be amazing. Um, that goal by Bizzle. I was just about to say that. <laughs> yes. Holy shit. That, yeah, I, that, uh, yeah, that that backhand there off the ice. Whew. Uh, yep, it was right in front of you, us. You want to yeah. see Corey's jaw drop? You <laughs> watch that goal. He looked at me and he just goes, what a goal! I, knew, was... I, w- I was coming on the other side there in case there was a rebound or something, but you know it, it's hard to catch uh, Billy Bazo in the ice, so uh, I was a little late <laughs> on the play, and uh, you could just see him go down that board, and there he, he does it with so much speed, it's unreal, and uh, he just you know backhand on the right on the ice and uh, surprise uh, Austin there. Uh, so yeah, no, it's always fun to see some uh, some goals like that there. Yeah, it's, uh, man, I'm glad we were there. I'm glad we recorded it because that might be the goal of the year. And I'm glad we have it captured because shit, well, why that's not? Good. Now you just get to get the views on it and, uh, you know, it might pay. <laughs> there you go. That's, uh, <laughs> that's great. We're, we're not in it for that. We just love covering it. It's that's been right. fun, man. Um, the support from the league has been really pretty amazing. We, we appreciate it. Oh man, no, definitely. I mean, you guys are, are what the league needed. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm all for what you guys do. It's, it's crazy. Everybody loves it. I mean, your podcast, everyone listens to that. So it's, you know, it's the best thing that happened to the Bosnian Hockey League, uh, as of this winter and last winter. So we well, appreciate that. that. So now we've got our generic questions that we have to ask every, every player, because we just need to know. Okay. Right on. I'm ready for it. All right, brother. Uh, what's your favorite rink? to be in as the visiting team? Um, <clears throat> Miramichi. Yeah. Miramichi, Miramichi is, uh, is the place to be, man. It's is it uh, the people. It's just packed. It, it's the people. It's, uh, I mean, I played uh, two years in, uh, with the Rivermen there when I was 14 and 15 years old. So uh, Miramichi is, is where I played uh, the last hockey before I played major junior. So I kind of met the people from around there and, uh, you know, was always in Miramichi. So it feels like home to play there. It's a fantastic place to go. Um, oh, yeah, uh, man. People are great. Yeah. Uh, next question here. Uh, if you're not playing, if you're, if, even if you are playing, uh, do you have any favorite foods at a hockey rink? Oh, man, that one is easy, eh? It uh, yeah. definitely has to be the Putin. I mean, for me, it's a favorite. Oh, man, it's <laughs> not anywhere you go, either it's in the Renews or Bell Center or wherever you go, everything, man, it's got to be the best. How's the Putin in ship again? I mean, it's always good. Yeah. <laughs> you guys should try it. I mean, we'll, uh, we'll let me try it when we get there. Yeah. The last 100%. player that told me that, I tried it and it was great. Good, good. So you'll have to try to put in at this, like I, I said, to. there before the game. So. <laughs> Um, do you have any superstitions on game day or do you have a game day routine that you stick to? Uh, well, um, since, uh, you know, when I was playing junior and stuff like that, I had, uh, the opportunity to sleep a little bit before the games and stuff like that there, <laughs> but, uh, you know, working nine to five and you'd be at the rink at six thirty, you know, six thirty ish, six forty five. So, uh, I don't really have any routines now, uh, Let's say I just eat a lot of carbs, so most of the time it's like mom spaghetti or something like that. But uh, and then as I get to the rink, I'm all fired up, and uh, yeah, no, I don't really have any superstitions. Like, like I don't put my skates uh, in a certain order or anything. But uh, uh, I like to take my hockey stick the same way. So that's pretty much about it. So yeah, you got to make sure that the tools you're working with are uh, are set up properly. Do, oh yeah, uh, that's right. That's right. I mean, our our gear are all. Uh, you know, set ready for the game. So you don't have to stress about anything. So yeah, it's That's pretty good. Perfect. What, uh, what kind of music do you guys listen to in the locker room? What do you guys get listen to fire up? 
<laughs> oh man, it, it goes all over the place. There, it could be some uh, some beats, some techno. It goes from some Snoop Dogg sometimes, Eminem, uh, you know, uh, Iron Maiden. And it, it goes from Nickelback or whatever it is. Some it always it always is different. So it's whichever guy comes in the room first, puts some music, everybody tunes into, and uh, you know when the beat's no good, then uh, you know the, <laughs> the vet the vets on the team will will tell the guy, but you know it's. Uh, uh, for most part, there, uh, uh, yeah, no, it's pretty much everything there. We don't really have any uh, preference. Right on, man. We, uh, yeah, we love we love Shipkin. One of the first people we interviewed was uh, Sarge, and he was very generous. And yes, uh, we sure, want to thank sure. you for thank you for your time as well. We would definitely appreciate it. Yeah, no and, worries, uh, guys. I mean, it's a pleasure. We'll uh, we'll be sure to reconnect in a few months and talk again before the playoffs. Well, sure. I mean, uh, you got my number now, so you guys let me know when the hoodies are out, and uh, I can't wait to get one, and uh, we'll have to share that and make some, uh, you know, just uh, show that to everybody and uh, get sales going your way. We love it. Love yeah, it. buddy. Thank you, Patrick. Okay, thanks, guys. Have a wonderful Thank evening you. there. Bye-bye. Same you to too. You. Talk soon. See ya. Bye-bye.